Good morning and welcome to the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners meeting of August 23rd, 2022. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have the agenda review. Mr. Chair, uh, we don't really have any changes to the order of the agenda, but I just would call out that um, we did provide you with a revised planning and zoning document uh, from what was in the original packet. Uh, so I'd make that note. And then also we did uh, receive notification from the applicant for the exempt gambling permit that they've changed the date of their event. So we've also provided you a revised application. So just wanted to note those two changes. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, Move the agenda. It's been moved by Kevin. Second. Second by Vance. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Okay, first thing on the docket is our Garrett with the planning and zoning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You're running the show today, huh? I guess so. <coughs> uh, I guess. Thank, thank you, Commissioners. My name is Gary Rolfing with Property Environmental Resources. Um, PC 19-22 is a request from Michael and Adriana Evers for review and approval of an interim use permit to operate a nature-based preschool as a level two home occupation. The property is zoned conservation and is in the southeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 17 Cambria Township. The location address is 48010 State Highway 68, New Ulm, Minnesota. Staff presented the report. There was no public comment. Members of the Planning Commission indicated the report was thorough and well thought out. They had no further questions or concerns. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted to forward a recommendation for approval of the request to the county board based on the findings prepared by staff and within the conditions recommended by staff. Following the planning commission meeting, a MnDOT senior planner met with MnDOT access committee to review the proposal. The MnDOT access committee concluded that the access closest to county road 45 should be removed. And if a second access is desired, the access should be re relocated to county road 45 where it previously existed. As a result of the decision made by the MnDOT access committee, Staff reviewed the applicable standards required for approval of an interim use permit. Item I states that facilities are required to eliminate any traffic congestion or traffic hazard which may result from the proposed use. The supportive finding for this standard has been amended to read, provided all MnDOT recommendations and conditions are followed, the proposed project should not have concerns with traffic congestions or pose a traffic hazard. And the board action is passage of the resolution based on findings and conditions recommended by the Planning Commission and with the amendment provided by staff to item I. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Garrett. Okay. <clears throat> well, at this time, and I'll call for <clears throat> public comment. We'll open it for public comment on PC number 19 22. This hearing is being recorded, so please state your name and address to the record and please limit your comments to three minutes. Do we have anybody wishing to make a comment on uh, PC-1920-22? I'm uh, Michael Evers. I live at 48010 State Highway 68. Um, and I understand uh, MnDOT's concern with the westerly access. Um, however, that is the better access to our place as the easterly one is right near the bridge and has guard railing to when you're looking to the east and it's very hard to see traffic coming from the east on that road. Um, and I understand that they want us to move to the smaller county road as well. Um, but with the railroad being right there, there would be a lot of times where traffic would be backed up from the railway where we would no longer be able to access that. Hmm. <coughs> and from what I've read in the emails, I guess their main concern is with the, um, the other intersection being right there people coming on and off during busy times. Um, it would be kind of hard. Um, but with us only being able to have about 10 kids at the, at the daycare, that would probably be five, six, seven families at most. Um, and we've also offered that we would stagger 
drop-off times to re even reduce further the amount of people coming in and out at once. Okay. Uh, <coughs> comments on Garrett? Yeah, I could respond to that. Um, I met with Angela Piltiver, who's a Min MnDOT senior planner, out on site prior to the planning commission meeting. Um, and at, at that time, it, it was thought that the westerly access, which, which they would like to see removed, um, was the better access for, for sight lines and things like that. Mm -hmm. However, she was not the decision maker. She was taking it back to the MnDOT Access Committee. Um, and at that time, that's when they determined that, that westerly <laughs> access is just too close um, to the intersection of County Road 45 there which is kind of unfortunate, like you said, that is their primary access to their home currently. Um, there is a guardrail on that easterly access that you know may prevent some, some sight lines. Also, there's the, the road starts to curve there after the bridge. However, you know we are not the road authority for 68, which MnDOT has control of. So that's why we added that condition and, and or added that um, finding to be changed there. And we have conditions in there that they just work with MnDOT on that to see if they can work something out. <coughs> so both the accesses are there right now? They are. Yeah. Um, Mr. Evers, you can correct me here if I'm wrong, but that westerly or easterly access there it isn't used very often, maybe just to and from the shed. That's correct. correct. And that's the one they want you to use? Correct. They want you to push all the traffic there. They want you to push the four cars over there. Okay. Uh, any other any other comments? So uh, let's just clear this up now. So, yeah. I mean, my understanding is that you're you're saying that I think we should move forward with this today, and then the applicant could work with the state and with your help. I would imagine. Correct. Yeah, I, I don't them. think we can. I, I think they need to discuss this just a little bit more. That just seems reasonable. It's not a doesn't sound like it's going to be a high traffic issue. You're talking a few cars, drop offs. Right. Um, two sessions per day, maximum of 10 kids per yeah. session. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think we'll move forward with this today because I want you to get this rolling and get this part going because I think this is a great program you got going here. Um, but, uh, and as long as that is written out in here that you'll work with them, I think hopefully you'll be able to work through that. Okay. That would be good. Okay. Any other? Okay. Mr. Chair, so just to be clear, it's a change you use for this property, okay, which is a new permit and review will be conducted. So is that review, is there more review to do? Is it review to be conducted, determine if there's any changes will be needed, including consolidation into one removal or no change. So um, has that is there more discussion yet, or have there some decisions been made, and how can we help impact those decisions with MnDOT? Sure. So the, the latest comments that we've received from MnDOT were that that westerly access be removed. Um, we left the condition generic enough that it allows the applicant to be able to work with MnDOT so we weren't the ones that would hold them up if something were to change in that westerly access could continue to be used. Um, they did mention, um, it's, you can't see it exactly in this photo right now, but County Road 45 that heads to the north there um, around the western property line. Um, railroad tracks cross right up there and that green space is where sh they would like to use um, just that area for their, their preschool and that would eliminate a lot of that area if they were to bring a road in, in through there. But does the land owner have any impact if I'm going to be consolidated from two driveways to one driveway, which is basically what they're saying, I don't have a choice which one of the two driveways I want to keep? Correct. They are saying the westerly access needs to be removed if they move forward with this application. And that's Not their if main they move forward with this application. And but that's their main. That's they're their forcing main them to using a driveway that they typically use very seldom. seldom. Just because for the machine shed. Yeah, because of the well, which is fuel. also I'm sure that yeah. the first driveway probably enters into. Uh, you probably have garages and stuff coming there. I mean, it would completely mess up <coughs> the, the uh, 
outlay of the property if you if you were forced to use that other driveway and take out that driveway that's that's no common sense at all but I, I agree with Commissioner uh, Brunder that we should continue with this today and uh, approve it and, and have it uh, uh, work this out with MnDOT. See how that could be another. Might as well finish the public hearing quick. Yeah. Yep. All right. Those comments. And at this time, do you have anybody else wishing to comment? Um, 19, number 19-22. Uh, again, if there's anybody wishing to comment on uh, PC-19-22, please come forward. If we hear nobody else at this point, bring the comments. Uh, we'll bring it back to the board for any discussion or conclusion. We have kind of I would move approval of the resolution based <coughs> on the findings and conditions recommended by the Planning Commission and with the amended provided by staff on item I. I will second that. Okay, it's been seconded. Advance. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I, I certainly would recommend that I would be very supportive of this letting him leave the driveways the way they are. I have a real problem with them making him take one out for this small bit of activity we're going to have there. So I, just from my perspective, when you're negotiating or visiting with them, I certainly don't want to take out his main access and make him put in a new access because of this. Now, if they want to make him put in another access, you know, use that shed road for his four or five cars that are coming for the biz for the business portion, that could be up for discussion. But I certainly think that this is a, and unless you disagree with me, um, I think this is a low enough impact that I think that'd be just very disruptive uh, for a program that looks like a really good program. I understand their safety concerns and I, I appreciate that, but that just seems like a lot of things going on for <coughs> this, you know. So that's agree. my my opinion. I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the board, but I'm just telling you my opinion. We take your opinion with a lot, though. <laughs> <coughs> Any further? It looks like a very good program, so thank you for doing that. It's a, those are uh, much needed <coughs> programs in this county. Hearing no other discussion, um, although <coughs> uh, yeah, we have a motion. Yep. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, carries. Thank you, Thank Garrett. You, Garrett. We'll work on that. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Yep. Good luck to you. All right. Um, that's we got a ditch. We've got a ditch. ditch. County ditch 86. Set a hearing. Hearing, <coughs> Craig. Uh, I guess you could introduce yourself. Uh -huh. Craig Austinson, the Blue Earth County Ed Drainage Management Coordinator. Um, <coughs> today's subject is on County Ditch 86, the improvement of Branch 2 and 3, petition for lateral and the redetermination of the benefits. County Ditch 86 was uh, established in 1956 and is located in Decoria and Buford Townships. There are two petitioned projects before the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority, the improvements of Branch 2 and 3, and the establishment of a new lateral. As part of the petition, a redetermination of benefits was also ordered by the Drainage Authority. At today's meeting, the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority, we are requesting the board set hearings for the improvement, the establishment of a lateral, and the redetermination of benefits to be held on September 27th, 2020. 22 at 9 a.m. in the second floor Board of Commissioners rooms at the Blue Earth County Historic Courthouse, 204 South 5th Street, Mankato, Minnesota. Move to approve. And move by Vance. There's a second. <coughs> second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor, second five, saying hi. Aye. 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 Post carries. No, this is three separate orders, is that? It's three? Yeah, I would suggest that the board do three separate actions. So right. okay. um, the first one, I think, <coughs> was the um, hearing for the improvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would move the establishment of a lateral. Okay, Kevin's moved for the establishment of the lateral. Is there a second? Second. Second by Kip. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 
Opposed carries. And we have a redetermination of the benefits. A con continuation. No, I like for order, order for the hearing. Yeah. Continuation of Re order for redetermination the of benefits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. I would move that. And Vance moves that. We have a second. Second. Second by Kevin. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank All right. You. Thanks, That's Craig. It. Thanks, Craig. All right. Um, wow, we're done. All right. Human services. Morning, Phil. Morning, Morning Phil. Morning. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Good. Pretty good. No big complaints. Few items here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, for hearing the human service um, action items. First of all, I have a couple of informational items as well. Um, the action items first being supportive housing, um, partners for housing. We have a second CLI um, direct assistance grant. CLI stands for Community Living Infrastructure, and this project involves four counties ourselves. Um, Lesueur, Nicollet, and Rice counties working together for these um, services to support eligible households that struggle with disabled, disabling conditions or housing instability. Um, they can receive support for security and rent deposits, first and last month's rent, back due rent, application fees, and the big one is essential furnishings that a lot of our grants and emergency assistance do not allow for us to buy furniture or anything that a bed that might be needed and this grant does so that's that's a really big advantage of, of these dollars uh, you'll see the amount at 414,700 377,000 of that is direct assistance and 37 7 for administrative costs the term of the agreement is August 1st of 22 through March 31st of 24 and then one other action item, Mr. Chair, is advisory committee appointment. Ira Linehan um, is volunteered to be a member of our human service advisory committee. Mr. Linehan is a resident of Blue Earth District County 1. Blue Earth County District 1, there it is. Um, those are my two action items. Those are the two. Any discussion? I move approval. Approval for second for we do them both at once here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, second. there's a second. Okay, uh, I just um, said kind of with the partners, just one thing quick with the partners for housing is that a um, is that a different grant? I, I don't recall the yeah, C, CLI. <coughs> yeah, Mr. Chair, different? we had we had a previous grant um, that also went to the partnership that we have with these other counties and this is the second time we were able to apply mm -hmm. so they're okay. they're held as two different grants we look to partners to really help us administrate um, the funds and um, one of the issues we have of course is some of the administrative supports if you form a joint powers board as opposed to having somebody like partners do that work for us so we prefer to try to have a central agency that we can all relate to rather than we keep doing um, you know the fiscal host pieces that um, are um, involved at times so that's part of that partnership I had to include them in our primary partnership with the other three counties all right thank you okay we have it in front of us I guess all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed carries thank you mr. Thank chair you. Um, commissioner some <coughs> informational discussion items adult foster care this is our really our licensing piece and then adult protection, which is similar to um, child protection that we're more aware of usually um, based on volume, but as important is for vulnerable adults that are in a vulnerable situation and if concerns come up that we also uh, intercede on their behalf. And then finally, project management metrics um, that I want to talk with you about. Uh, the first slide about adult foster care, um, you'll see the six bullets of the different areas that adult foster care serves um, developmental disability physical disability brain injury chemical dependency mental illness and the elderly you'll see that that first um, table 107 corporate adult foster care homes so that's the difference between this and the next table 
um, that 107 um, foster care homes, 386 beds in this area of service. And you'll see the breakdown to the different areas um, based on those 386 beds or number of homes. The lion's share being in Mankato, but um, just like the child care situation that was just before the board, um, it's essential that we're represented throughout the county. And then there's another kind of licensing you can have, which is adult foster care homes that are family. So there's seven of those, and that's really where you do it out of your home. And so the same with child care. You can have a corporate child care or you can have family-based child care, two different kinds of licenses. The numbers are obviously smaller here. You'll see the spread out of the seven different um, homes and how our residents are spread out even beyond our, our catchment area in Blue Earth County. Um, we have a total capacity of 21 beds. The next graphs show some trend line um, in that the corporate foster care is going up slightly over the years and we are tracking downward with family foster care, which is a concern, just like daycare. Daycare gets a lot of the, the press, but um, this one is also a concern that we not lose that element. I think to be in a family setting like that is, is a really special opportunity for some of the people we serve. And then you'll see that both with regard to the number of homes, and then the next graph is with regard to the number of beds, same kind of trend line. I want to keep rolling, Mr. Chair. If <coughs> anybody has any questions or wants to stop me, that's fine. Otherwise, we can deal with those at any point. Um, adult protection. Um, the first two pages are a breakout of the detail. I know commissioners sometimes like to see some more of the data behind the graphs that we provide to you. But if we could look at the tables, those are the summaries of all the data that are provided in the first page. Table one um, shows the agency reports. And for 2021, what we're reporting on today, 393 reports, which included 419 allegations so that means that there are some reports that have more than one allegation it could be both financial neglect um, something else going on so we treat those separately as how many allegations are contained in the reporting um, i think it's an interesting number a high number especially with regard to covid that people were still reporting at a clip that was similar to previous years um, or much higher than 2020 and as far as we're concerned to mission that's a very good thing um, so yeah, and then I talked about the multiple allegations is what creates those numbers to vary between the two columns. The table two is our agency response, and out of the reports, 393 in 2021, uh, 98 of those were screened in, or 25%, which is similar to previous years, um, slightly above the previous um, year in 2020. And um, there is a lot of criteria that goes into this as well as child protection as far as what um, necessitates an investigation. So even that we didn't forward it to an investigation doesn't mean that we're not concerned. Um, we're really concerned about every report. That something's probably going on. It might not meet the level or the criteria that would be considered adult protection, but I think it's very good that we still deal with that in a very direct manner and process that as a team and obviously give feedback or follow up as necessary to any report that comes to our agency. And then finally, table three with regard to adult protection. Um, this is the breakout of what actually happened in those 98 reports. So it breaks down into those categories um, what, we were, what our findings were. And um, again, it's kind of hard to, they're kind of self-explanatory, but if there's any questions, I can try my best to address those. Yeah, the column across the top shows the different kinds of findings that we have and then obviously the determination along the left column. So that is our data for adult protection for last year. Two. And then finally, I have just some slides on project management. Um, we've talked to the board about our project management platform in the past. We went to a new Microsoft Planner um, format, and this is a snapshot of that format. Um, more detail than, than we normally bring to the board, but um, I think staff are feeling that this is working very well, and some of the detail is helpful when we talk in global terms. It's sometimes hard to get a sense of what are we talking about. 
so I probably won't bring all the detail in the future, but um, did want to show the board what this um, what this process looks like for us. Um, this new tracking tool breaks things down. That second box, the overview, 21 to 22. Um, you'll see we completed 22 projects and we churned 60 projects, so either triage them out into these other categories or they might be active at this status too. They're not completed yet. Um, the new format defines and tracks our projects. And then the thing that's not really represented in these slides that I probably would emphasize the most is we have what we call a BRD, and that stands for Business Requirements Document. So at the very beginning of a project, really anyone in human services can bring a project forward, meaning a supervisor or any of our administrative staff. Um, IT, we cross over with a lot. And you can identify projects, and I think this is something we, we could either find an efficiency for or improve quality on, and you can bring that forward. We meet every other week to review those proposals using this form called the BRD. Um, the business requirements document identifies the who, the what, and the timeline. And so it just uh, gives us the structure we need to kind of track things over time. And that's been in place for, for quite some time, but this new formatting is why I included a lot of the detail. The first list of, of examples, which I obviously will not go through, um, and you can certainly ask me about them. Some of them I will know about and some of them I know less about. Um, but examples of the completed projects is that first long list of just what staff churn through and what they're working on and some of those examples. And then past that, you'll see another list and that's the example of our active projects that are currently underway. And so we have some you know, robust discussions about is this still a topic that we want? We get halfway in and realize maybe it's not what we wanted and we pull the plug. Um, sometimes a project that we think is one project is actually three projects, so we have to separate them out and write more BRDs. But the bottom line is I wanted the board to know this is working for us and we have a lot of complexity and a lot of volume and so this kind of makes some sense out of our, our um, franticness at times. Um, that's why we're providing it, and I will continue to do so probably in a little bit more of a contained format. Okay. You have any questions? I'm trying to get my handle on it all. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff to keep yeah. track of. Right? Yeah. Right. That's right. Keep in your head. I used to be able to keep things in my head. No longer true. <laughs> oh, good. Then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <coughs> Very good. Any, anybody? Questions? Any, uh, Phil? Um, I don't good. think I have anything today. Yeah. Good report. Uh, well, with that, thank you much. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank you much. Well. Thank you. And Have a good day. That rest you. of the day. Okay. Uh, we got, or I guess we're into the, minute, the minutes. Yes, Mr. Chair, the first item <coughs> under administration is the county board minutes for August 9th. In front of you. We have to approve. Vance most approved. Second. Second. <coughs> Second by Julianne. All right. Uh, discussion. All those in favor, saying goodbye, saying aye. 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 Opposed, carries. All right. Next are the bills Please. for the two weeks indicated. All right. Yeah. I move the bills. Kevin moves the bills. Okay. Second. Second by Kip. And no questions. And I guess all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, carries. And then we have. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number six in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. We just have a couple of informational items today. This is one of the shortest yeah. HR yeah. agendas in a long time, but I'm told next meeting we'll be back to normal okay. and fill a couple pages. Gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so it's a brief respite. Uh, but we have a filled a transport officer position in the Sheriff's Department and then also uh, filled a correctional officer in the jail. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have about either of those items. What, uh, how long does it take for the correctional officer to be on his own? It's a number of months. I don't remember the Is exact six number. Month period or? Um, that sounds about right, but I'd need to double check to make sure. 
Okay. Are we up to par now with that, or are we still low? Oh, I think we are still in need of additional mm -hmm. uh, staff. A but few yet. <coughs> we have um, stemmed some of the outgoing traffic, if you will. Um, our retention is better after we made some of those pay adjustments, and so we're slowly making progress here. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. That's good to hear, too. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number seven in your packet is a memo regarding the appointment of Ryan Short as a county assessor. As you're aware, we've been working over the last few years in terms of uh, the structure of the Property Environmental Resources Department and uh, really trying to move things along in a way that we have now um, have a structure within that department of three kind of divisions the property and land, waste and recycling, and services and records. Um, Mark Vanderfeld uh, is our current uh, county assessor, and he's taken on more responsibility as this um, <coughs> realignment of the department has been occurring. And so Ryan, uh, yeah, Ryan Short has taken on more of those kind of core county assessor responsibilities, and so we're here today asking uh, for board support to appoint uh, Mr. Short as the Blue Earth County Assessor effective September 1st of 2022. There is a new requirement that the County Assessor uh, be sworn in and so the oath of office would be um, provided if uh, the County Board does appoint uh, Mr. Short as the County Assessor. So um, if uh, Appointed, his term would fill out the remainder of Mark Manderfield's current term, which goes through December 31st of 2024. 2024. Yes. I would move to appoint Ryan Short as county assessor. Second. I move by Vance and second by Kip. Any further discussion, questions? I just have a comment. Right. Ryan does a great job for the county. He has mm -hmm. been uh, doing a lot of stuff with our commercial properties and helping us with some of our court processes and uh, I've talked to him many times about different things in the county he's very well versed and I think he will do a wonderful job at that position yep. I think so too all right anything anybody else okay um, and the motion in front of us all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed carries so Bob just for a point of clarification what do we do with Mark's position then? Does he resign or does it just go away or? Just uh, you have now appointed a new assessor okay. and so that we'll report that to the Department of Revenue and they'll make sure that Ryan meets all the okay. requirements yeah. and it'll just be in place then. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the next item is a temporary liquor license for the Blue Earth County Fair Association. Uh, they have requested a one day liquor license. Um, looking quickly here for the date and September 24th. And so um, that has been reviewed and recommended for approval. Is there a motion? So moved. I move by Kevin. Second. Second by Kip. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Post carries. One day event. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number eight in your packet is an exempt gambling permit. Um, a Ducks Unlimited chapter has requested um, approval of a gambling permit. This is the document that's been provided at your seat where they did uh, recommend or uh, request a change in the date. Uh, so in the packet it indicates the date is October 15th. I believe they've now shifted to October 29th. So. Yep recommending approval of this exempt gambling permit. Move to approve. Move to approve. Moves. Second. Second. Second by Kip. And, all right. Looks good. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Item number 10 in the packet is the financial status report for July 31st of this year. Um, I would draw your attention to the fact that um, through July um, we had revenues of $65.4 million against uh, expenses of $60.5 million, 60 million. 
So we're a little bit ahead um, at this point in the year. Um, when you compare that to our budget, our revenues are running a little ahead of budget, um, somewhat related to um, the ARP dollars that we've received. Um, <coughs> expenses are pretty much on target at 57.2% compared to a target of 58.3%. So all things considered, we're pretty much on target there. Um, again, on the expenditure side, uh, the contracts and fees line, our road projects are up from last year, which was to be expected um, and is running a little bit above budget at this point as uh, we've had a good construction year. Um, in terms of revenue, um, the state and federal has picked up a little bit. Uh, it was lagging behind, but again, I think those ARP funds have um, help that uh, particular line item. Our transportation sales tax continues to come in at a, a healthy rate. We'll be above budget certainly uh, this year based on the performance so far. So um, in terms of the enterprise fund, you'll see that uh, revenues there are 2.6 million against expenses of slightly over 1 million. So. Uh, again, this year is a, a positive one in terms of revenue exceeding expenses, mostly because we haven't invested in any major equipment or cell development at this point, but uh, that will come in future years. The second page shows our cash and investment balances. You'll see at the top our total available funds are at 76.8 million against a six month operating target of. 51.7, so that's running a little higher than normal. Down towards the bottom, the total county funds at 139.4 million um, is up a little bit from last year. Um, but again, we anticipate as we go through the remainder of the year that some of those numbers will come down. Overall though, uh, continue to sit in good uh, financial position be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Okay. It was positive. Okay, all good, all good signs, okay. It is. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, that's it, and then. Okay. That's all I have for you, Mr. Okay. Chair. All right, uh, well then. I guess we get into, uh, gee, we're already there. Uh, committee reports. Who wants to go first today? So I can say, start, Mr. Chair. Mine's not terribly okay, long today. Yeah, we'll take the ambitious one first. Okay, Kim? Well, after our last work session, uh, I attended the MICA meeting on conference call, but in September, Mark, you'll be excited. We are meeting in person. I'm not sure if you were on the call. I didn't, yeah, I wasn't on Zoom, so. I know you were working that day, but uh, so September we are meeting in person. All so right. we will be back at it there. Uh, they had a just a regular report getting spooled up for the upcoming platform we'll be working on. So I suppose we'll start that in September, October, so we can get that all done by the end of the year. Ready for the legislative session. Uh, we had our board work session. We had our highway shop neighborhood meeting again which I thought went very well Bob did a great job uh, trying to answer the questions but um, we we muddled through it and I think we appeased some people but we still have uh, a lot of work to do there yet um, had a couple other small uh, South Central EMS meeting and some committee meetings for my statewide emergency communication board and some calls on some properties out in the rural area that aren't looking so good and some road and ditch stuff. That's my report, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Kip. Well, do we'll go to the corner there, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, since our last board meeting, I went to the Region 9 uh, board meeting for the first time. Uh, so just starting there and learning more about the organization, hopefully I'll bring what they're up to to the next, after the next meeting. Uh, and then I also met with the Community Education and Recreation Director um, to prepare for future meetings with them. And then attended the board work session and the uh, public uh, 
house for the public works facility. In my report. Thank you. All right. Bands. Well, after our last meeting, uh, me and you uh, were involved with the special elections mm -hmm. canvas. Yep. Um, and then uh, the next day, uh, uh, myself and Commissioner Papp and Commissioner People were at the Farm Bureau annual meeting, which was uh, <coughs> Always interesting to go to, and uh, it's great to see a, a program that helps the community and the farm area so much. Um, the 16th, we had our work session. On the 17th, we had our public hearing on the public works building, and that's already been discussed. And then on the 19th, we I had a TDS board meeting. Uh, big discussion was... Uh, issues that are coming in on people wanting to ban certain books mm. um, and this is going around the country and it's just uh, how do you how do you uh, handle those types of issues when people are uh, talking about that and that's the end of my report okay thank you Vance Kevin since the August 9th uh, board meeting uh, that's <coughs> already been mentioned has been uh, the region 9 uh, board meeting Farm Bureau annual meeting work session the public works uh, neighborhood meeting number three in addition um, I attended the drainage work group on August 11th um, on August 12th uh, Bob and I participated in the uh, vine uh, um, at vine at the uh, true uh, joint powers board uh, for the town and rural Ex urban express uh, as we looked at that budget and were updated on that annual meeting um, also attended the the EAA breakfast um, kind of concerns calls I've got has been primarily uh, MFS composting CD 52 uh, of course the Rapid and Dam a public workshop and I would just also add a couple upcoming things uh, tomorrow Blue Earth County uh, will be uh, kind of hosting the rural Minnesota Energy Board mm. um, are coming to, to Wilmarth to tour that facility on Friday, we've got kind of a big meeting with the Lesseur One Watershed, One Plan Policy Committee, where we'll be looking at kind of finalizing the implementation table, which uh, lead uh, local government units uh, will take that, as well as administrative structures. So we'll uh, have some discussions there with the different counties as far as what is the county staff capacity to achieve those goals. And then next Wednesday, I'm participating in the, the Association of Minnesota Counties uh, IOH Implements of Husbandry work group. They put a group together as we're looking at uh, uh, implements of husbandry or farm equipment is what we'd call it um, as it uh, pertains to the county road infrastructure. So that completes my report. Thank it's great you. having you yeah. on that group. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> That's good. Um, yeah, I don't have, let's see, uh, as Van said, after a board meeting last time, we did have a special election canvas. I was able to make that. And then we had on the, uh, oh, a little meeting on ASA, our All Seasons Arena on that Monday. Uh, that's being continued with our uh, <coughs> improvements there. Uh, then we had the uh, our work session. And um, after that, the, um, we had a public yeah, hearing and the public works building, you should say, then on the 17th. And um, yeah, that was, and then on this morning, I've been up bright and early, bushing, what was it, brown or bushy tail, whatever, um, uh, airports commission. It, it's, it was dark yet, so come on, I know it was <laughs> early for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that concludes my report. All right. Mr. Chair, uh, just an update to some of the questions Commissioner Stuenberg had. Um, staff have helped uh, provide me some answers to those. Uh, a correctional officer, uh, full-time, it takes six to seven weeks uh, to complete the training and 10 to 11 weeks if a part-time staff. Mm -hmm. We currently have eight openings for full-time or part-time, and we have five people that are currently in the hiring process with the hope of uh, filling some of those much. positions so 
That's the update on those questions. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Very good. Anything else for the good of the order? Move to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. It's been moved. Adjourn and second by Vance. Okay. Vote in favor. Say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Good job, Mr. Okay. Chair. Uh, and then we're uh, we'll be so busy here. Restroom still being fixed up. Here.